What if the truth about Jesus' teachings lies buried in the sands of time? Let's take a journey back to the year 1945, to a small town in Egypt known as Nag Hammadi. It was here that a remarkable discovery was made, one that would forever change our understanding of Christian history. Found within an earthenware jar were a collection of ancient manuscripts, a treasure trove of texts that had been hidden away from the world for over a millennia. Among these texts was a document known as the Gospel of Thomas. Unlike the traditional four Gospels of the New Testament, this Gospel does not narrate the life and miracles of Jesus. Instead, it presents 114 sayings attributed to Jesus, many of them esoteric and profoundly spiritual. But why, you might ask, was the Gospel of Thomas, along with other texts, not included in the New Testament? The answer takes us back to the First Council of Nicaea in the 4th century, where church leaders decided which texts were to be considered canonical and which were not. The Gospel of Thomas, with its emphasis on inner knowledge over institutional religious practice, didn't make the cut. It was deemed heretical, a threat to the established order, and was effectively buried and forgotten. But let's pause for a moment and consider this. What if these excluded texts held teachings of Jesus that were not shared in the canonical Bible? What if these ancient, forgotten scriptures contained wisdom that could offer us a new perspective on Jesus and his teachings? These are the questions that have haunted historians and theologians alike for decades. And while we may never fully know the answers, the discovery of these texts has opened up a world of possibilities. They offer a glimpse into an alternative Christian history, one that challenges our conventional understanding of Jesus and his teachings. These texts, kept secret for centuries, may hold the key to a different understanding of Jesus and his teachings. Could the Gospel of Thomas hold the secrets to eternal life and self-knowledge? Let's delve into this ancient text and unravel its profound teachings. The Gospel of Thomas, unlike the familiar Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, does not narrate the life and miracles of Jesus. Instead, it's a compilation of 114 sayings of Jesus, some of which echo the familiar, others veer into the profound and enigmatic. This Gospel, discovered in the mid-20th century in Nag Hammadi, Egypt, presents a unique perspective on Jesus' teachings. It is proposed that the Gospel of Thomas places a strong emphasis on self-awareness and spiritual enlightenment. This is a far cry from the institutional religious practices that have come to define mainstream Christianity. One saying from the Gospel of Thomas goes, If those who lead you say to you, see, the kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the sky will precede you. If they say to you, it is in the sea, then the fish will precede you. Rather, the kingdom is inside of you, and it is outside of you. This suggests a perspective where the divine is not found in a distant heaven, but within the individual and their surroundings. A cornerstone of the Gospel of Thomas is the concept of the divine light within each person. This light, this spark of the divine, is not bestowed by a church or a priest, but is inherent in all, waiting to be discovered and nurtured. This is a stark departure from the mainstream Christian narrative, where salvation is sought through the church and its sacraments. The Gospel of Thomas, therefore, presents a Jesus who is less interested in establishing a religious institution and more focused on guiding individuals towards realizing their own divine potential. It's a fascinating perspective, suggesting that Jesus, rather than creating followers, might have aimed to create leaders equal to himself. Opening. What if Jesus was not the Son of God, but a spiritual teacher guiding us towards enlightenment, Let's delve into the fascinating world of Gnostic interpretations. The Gnostic texts unearthed at Nag Hammadi presented a view of Jesus that was unconventional, to say the least. Here, Jesus was portrayed not as a divine figure in the traditional sense, but as a spiritual guide, a beacon of wisdom leading followers to self-understanding and enlightenment. These texts, brimming with esoteric knowledge, hinted at the possibility that Jesus' teachings were far more layered than what the canonical Bible would have us believe. He wasn't just preaching about faith and piety, but also about the importance of inner consciousness, of the realization that the kingdom of God is within us all. 
Now let's turn our attention to a character who has been shrouded in mystery and controversy, Mary Magdalene. Traditional Christian narratives have often relegated Mary to the sidelines, but what if her role was far more significant? The Gospel of Mary, another text discovered among the Nag Hammadi scriptures, offers a fresh perspective on this enigmatic character. This Gospel portrays Mary not just as a disciple but as a spiritual confidant to Jesus, an individual privy to knowledge that was not shared with the other apostles. The Gospel of Mary underscores the importance of self-knowledge for salvation, a theme that resonates with Gnostic teachings. Could it be possible that Mary Magdalene was not just a peripheral figure, but a key player in Jesus' spiritual teachings? Could she have been a leader in the early Christian community, her influence systematically downplayed over centuries of patriarchal control? These are questions that continue to stir passionate debate among scholars, historians and theologians. The Gnostic interpretations of Jesus and Mary Magdalene challenge us to reconsider our understanding of early Christian history, to question the narratives we've been taught, and to explore the rich tapestry of spirituality that lies beneath the surface. Closing, could Mary Magdalene hold a greater role in Christian history than traditionally believed? Did secret societies like the Order of Zion and the Knights Templar preserve the true teachings of Jesus? This question has intrigued historians and conspiracy theorists alike for centuries. Let's delve into this fascinating subject. The Order of Zion, also known as the Priory of Sion, is a secretive organization that, according to some theories, was established in the early 12th century. Rumors swirl that this order was the guardian of a great secret, the bloodline of Jesus and Mary Magdalene. Yes, you heard it right. Some speculate that Jesus and Mary Magdalene were married and had children, and this divine lineage was protected by the Order of Zion. Then we have the Knights Templar, a medieval Christian military order. They're often depicted as holy warriors, but some suggest they were much more than that. It's speculated that the Knights Templar were privy to esoteric knowledge, teachings that were deemed too controversial or profound to be included in the canonical Bible. This hidden wisdom, it is said, was protected and passed down through the generations by the Templars. These secret societies are often linked to renowned historical figures. Leonardo da Vinci, for example, is frequently associated with the Order of Zion. Some believe that his paintings contain coded messages revealing the secrets of these societies. And then there's Sir Isaac Newton, who, as per some theories, was a high-ranking member of the Priory of Sion. Of course, these are all conjectures and theories often dismissed by mainstream scholars, yet they continue to captivate our collective imagination, offering an alternative narrative to the established history. These secret societies, with their supposed knowledge of the true teachings of Jesus, present a tantalizing mystery. They invite us to question, to explore, to uncover the hidden layers of history and spirituality. These societies shrouded in mystery might have been the custodians of humanity's spiritual past. Whether or not these theories hold any water, only time and perhaps more discoveries will tell. Until then, the allure of these secret societies and their hidden teachings remains undeniably captivating. What if Christian history as we know it is but a fraction of the full story? Imagine a tapestry of faith woven with threads of myriad colors and textures the hues we are familiar with are those of the canonical Bible, the teachings we've grown up with, the stories we've heard in Sunday school. But what if there are threads we've overlooked? Threads that have been intentionally hidden or simply forgotten over centuries. In our quest for truth, let's turn to esoteric knowledge. This hidden wisdom, reserved for the few, is said to offer an alternative perspective on Christian history, one that might challenge the traditional narrative. It's not about debunking our faith, but about enriching it, bringing in nuances and layers that have long been obscured. Consider the possible adaptations of older religious traditions. Many scholars argue that Christianity, like many other religions, didn't evolve in a vacuum. Instead, it absorbed and adapted elements from the faiths that preceded it. Could there be traces of ancient Egyptian, Babylonian or Persian religions in the Christianity we know today? Similarly, the role of esoteric knowledge in understanding Jesus' teachings is significant. 
The Gospel of Thomas, for instance, contains sayings of Jesus that hint at a deeper, more mystical understanding of his message. It suggests that the Kingdom of God is not an external entity, but an inner state of enlightenment that each individual can attain. The role of Mary Magdalene, too, offers a fresh perspective. What if she was not a repentant sinner, as she's often portrayed, but a close confidant and disciple of Jesus, instrumental in spreading his teachings? These alternative interpretations, while controversial, invite us to view Christian history through a different lens. A lens that expands the narrative, bringing in the forgotten, the overlooked, the hidden. They invite us to question, to explore, to seek. After all, isn't faith also about a relentless quest for truth? Could these alternative interpretations challenge the very foundations of traditional Christian beliefs?